Welcome to Cute Fast Track Series for API 510 Pressure Vessel Inspection Code. In service inspection, rating, repair, and alteration. In the previous lectures, we discussed sub clauses 5.1 through 5.5. In this lecture, we will discuss the sub clause 5.6 condition monitoring locations, CMLs, and sub clauses 5.7 condition monitoring methods, and highlight important information contained sub clauses 5.6 and 5.7. Condition Monitoring Locations CMLs. General CMLs are designated areas on pressure vessels where periodic examinations are conducted to monitor the presence and rate of damage, the type of CML selected, and placement of CMLs shall consider the potential for localized corrosion and service-specific damage. Examples of different types of CMLs include Locations for thickness measurement Locations for stress corrosion cracking examinations And locations for high temperature hydrogen attack examinations CML examinations Each pressure vessel shall be monitored by conducting a representative number of examinations at CMLs to satisfy the requirements for an internal and or on stream inspection. For example, the thickness for all major components, shells, heads, cone sections, and a representative sample of vessel nozzles should be measured and recorded. Corrosion rates, the remaining life, and next inspection intervals should be calculated to determine the limiting component. CMLs with the highest corrosion rates and least remaining life shall be part of those included in next planned examinations. Pressure vessels with high potential consequences if failure should occur and those subject to higher corrosion rates, localized corrosion, and high rates of damage from other mechanisms will normally have more CMLs and be monitored more frequently. The rate of corrosion damage shall be determined from successive measurements and the next inspection interval appropriately established. CML examinations where thickness measurements are obtained at CMLs. The minimum thickness at a CML can be located by ultrasonic measurements or radiography. Electromagnetic techniques also can be used to identify thin areas that may then be measured by ultrasonic techniques or radiography. Additionally, when localized corrosion is expected or a concern, it is important that examinations are conducted using scanning methods such as profile radiography, scanning ultrasonic techniques, and or other suitable NDE techniques that will reveal the scope and extent of localized corrosion. When scanning with ultrasonics, Scanning consists of taking several thickness measurements at the CML searching for localized thinning. The thinnest reading or an average of several measurement readings taken within the area of an examination point shall be recorded and used to calculate the corrosion rates. To perform FFS assessments of the metal loss, refer to parts 4 and 5 of API 579-1.
ASME FFS1 for preparation of such thickness grids. CMLs and examination points should be permanently recorded. For example marked on inspection drawings and, or on the equipment, as illustrated in figures below, to allow repetitive measurements, at the same CMLs. Repeating measurements, at the same location improves accuracy of the calculated damage rate. Example For a locally corroded area of considerable size, where the following thicknesses were measured over a 36 inch x 36 inch area with a 9 feet inside diameter. What thickness would be used to determine the corrosion rate for a pressure vessel, as per the data given in the table below? As per API 510, the thinnest reading or an average of several measurement readings taken within the area of an examination point shall be recorded and used to calculate the corrosion rates. From the data given, we can determine the average thickness and, or the thinnest reading as shown clearly. The thinnest reading to be used is 0.195 inch or the lowest average thickness to be used is 0.204 inch. CML selection and placement A decision on the type, number, and location of the CMLs should consider results from previous inspections, the patterns of corrosion and damage that are expected, and the potential consequence of loss of containment. CMLs should be distributed appropriately over the vessel to provide adequate monitoring coverage of major components and nozzles. Thickness measurements at CMLs are intended to establish general and localized corrosion rates in different sections of the vessel. For pressure vessels susceptible to localized corrosion, corrosion specialists should be consulted about the appropriate placement and number of CMLs. More CMLs should be selected for pressure vessels with any of the following characteristics. Higher potential for creating an immediate safety or environmental emergency in the event of a leak, unless the internal corrosion rate is known to be relatively uniform and low. Higher expected or experienced corrosion rates. Higher potential for localized corrosion. Fewer CMLs should be selected for pressure vessels with any of the following characteristics. Low potential for creating a safety or environmental emergency in the event of a leak. Relatively non-corrosive contents. Generally uniform corrosion rates. CMLs may be eliminated or the number significantly reduced when the probability and or consequence of failure is low, for example clean non-corrosive hydrocarbon service. In circumstances where CMLs will be substantially reduced or eliminated, a corrosion specialist should be consulted. Condition monitoring methods Examination technique selection General 
in selecting the techniques to use during a pressure vessel inspection, the possible types of damage for that vessel should be taken into consideration. The inspector should consult with a corrosion specialist or an engineer to help define the type of damage, the NDE technique, and extent of examination. Examples of NDE techniques that may be used include the following MT for cracks and other elongated discontinuities that extend to the surface of the material in ferromagnetic materials. Fluorescent or dye penetrant examination for disclosing cracks, porosity, or pinholes that extend to the surface of the material, and for outlining other surface imperfections, especially in nonmagnetic materials. RT for detecting internal imperfections, such as porosity, weld slag inclusions, cracks, and thickness of components. Ultrasonic thickness measurement and flaw detection for detecting the thickness of components and for detecting internal and surface breaking cracks and other elongated discontinuities. Alternating current flux leakage examination technique, ACFM, for detecting surface breaking cracks and elongated discontinuities. ET for detecting localized metal loss, cracks, and elongated discontinuities. Field metallographic replication for identifying metallurgical changes. Acoustic emission examination for detecting structurally significant defects. Infrared thermography for determining temperature of components. Pressure testing for detecting through thickness defects. Macrohardness and microhardness measurements using portable equipment for identifying variations in mechanical properties due to changes in material. Advanced ultrasonic backscatter technique examination for detecting high temperature hydrogen attack. Refer to API 572 for more information on examination techniques and API 577 for more information on the application of the above techniques for weld quality examination. Surface preparation Adequate surface preparation is important for proper visual examination and for the satisfactory application of any NDE procedures. The type of surface preparation required depends on the individual circumstances and NDE technique, but surface preparations such as wire brushing, grit, or water blasting, chipping, grinding, polishing, etching, or a combination of these preparations may be required. UT angle beam examiners The owner user shall specify industry qualified UT angle beam examiners when the owner user requires the following detection of interior surface ID breaking and internal flaws when inspecting from the external surface OD or where detection, characterization, and or through wall sizing is required of defects. Application examples for the use of industry qualified UT angle beam examiners include monitoring known interior flaws from the external surface, checking for suspected interior flaws, and collecting data for FFS evaluations. Thickness measurement methods Corrosion may cause a uniform loss, a general, relatively even metal loss of a surface area, localized loss only occurring in specific isolated areas, or may cause a pitted appearance and obvious, irregular surface metal loss. Uniform corrosion may be difficult to detect visually. 
so thickness measurements are usually necessary to determine its extent. Localized corrosion and pitted surfaces may be thinner than they appear visually, and when there is uncertainty about the original surface location, or depth of metal loss, thickness determinations may also be necessary. Measurements may be obtained as follows. Ultrasonic or profile radiographic. If produces considerable uncertainty, other NDE techniques, such as ultrasonic A scan, B scan, or C scan, as illustrated in figures below, may be employed. The depth of corrosion determined by gauging from the uncorroded surfaces in the surrounding of corroded area. Ultrasonic thickness measuring instruments are the most accurate after UT for CMLs of insulation. A good repair of insulation should obtain. RT is a good alternative of UT for CMLs of insulation that it doesn't need removing of insulation. Ultrasonic scanning or radiographic profile techniques are preferred where corrosion is localized or the remaining thickness is approaching the required thickness. Corrective procedures should be utilized when metal temperatures typically above 150 degrees Fahrenheit impact the accuracy of the thickness measurements obtained. Instruments, couplants, and procedures should be used that will result in accurate measurements at the higher temperatures. Typically, procedures will involve calibrating with hot test plates or adjusting measurements by the appropriate temperature correction factor 1% per 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That means the actual thickness readings to be reduced by a factor 1% per 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Inspectors and examiners should be aware of possible sources of measurement inaccuracies and make every effort to eliminate their occurrence. As a general rule, each of the NDE techniques will have practical limits with respect to accuracy. Factors that can contribute to reduced accuracy of ultrasonic measurements include the following. Improper instrument calibration external coatings or scale, excessive surface roughness, excessive rocking of the probe on curved surfaces, subsurface material flaws, such as laminations, temperature effects at temperatures above 150 degrees Fahrenheit, small flaw detector screens. Doubling of the thickness response on thinner materials. Example If the instrument was standardized on a piece of similar material at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and if the thickness reading was obtained with a surface temperature of 600 degrees Fahrenheit, the apparent reading should be the actual thickness readings to be reduced by a factor 1% per 100 degrees Fahrenheit. In this case surface temperature 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So, the apparent reading should reduced by 
Review questions. Question number one. Condition monitoring locations, CMLs, should be distributed appropriately over the vessel to provide adequate monitoring coverage of. Answer is A. Question number two. To comply with the requirements of API 510, how many thickness measurements should be taken on a pressure vessel during an internal or on stream inspection? Answer is A. Question number three. Fewer CMLs should be selected for pressure vessels if Answer is C. Question number four. CMLs may be eliminated or the number significantly reduced when Answer is C. Question number five. CMLs may be eliminated or the number significantly reduced when. Answer is C. Question number six. A minimal number of CMLs is acceptable provided. Answer is D. Question number seven. An inspector evaluating thickness measurements taken on a pressure vessel discovers indications of corrosion at only one of the corrosion monitoring locations. What should the inspector do? Answer is B. Question number eight. Localized corrosion is expected. It is important that examinations are conducted using scanning methods such as
Answer is A. Question number 9. In circumstances where CMLs will be substantially reduced or eliminated, Answer is A. Question number 10. The next inspection intervals for vessels in corrosive service should be determined by calculating remaining life of Answer is A. Question number 11. Acoustic emission techniques are used to detect. Answer is B. Question number 12. Alternating current flux leakage examination ACFM, techniques are used to detect. Answer is B. Question number 13. Normally, minimum thickness evaluation may be conducted by Answer is A. Question number 14. Best method to detect its subsurface crack in carbon steel material is Answer is C. Question number 15. Preferred methods of inspection for chloride induced stress corrosion cracking include Answer is B. Question number 16. Which of the following method is most suitable for detecting lamination? Answer is C. Question number 17. Radiograph testing RT for detecting. Answer is D. Question number 18. Which of as following is preferred techniques? Where corrosion is localized, or the remaining thickness is approaching the required thickness. Answer is D. Question number 19. Which of the following is not suitable for determining the thickness of a part? Answer is A. Question number 20. Factors that can contribute 
To reduced accuracy of ultrasonic measurements include all of the following except Answer is C. Question number 21. Corrective procedures should be utilized when metal temperatures impact the accuracy of the thickness measurements obtained. Answer is A. Question number 22. The apparent thickness reading obtained from steel walls having elevated temperatures is high, too thick by a factor of about. Answer is A. Question number 23. If the instrument was standardized on a piece of similar material at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and if the reading was obtained with a surface temperature of 860 degrees Fahrenheit, the apparent reading should be. Answer is D. Question number 24. When the detection of interior surface breaking flaws from the external surface is required, the owner user. Answer is C. Question number 25. If a measurement method produces considerable uncertainty, which of the following non-destructive thickness measurement techniques may be employed? Answer is D. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad, and this is his profile. <laughs>